there was ever an item of junk that deserved to spend its retirement fishing, it has to be the milk bottle top. And for this project, I'll be turning one to a pellet feeder on the advice of Bob from Bob's Tackle to do a bit of midsummer pond fishing. There are only a few basic components for this type of feeder. Obviously, a plastic milk bottle top, a homemade weight, a Q-tip to be used as a straw, and a bit of glue from a glue gun. To start with the weight, I'm going to make a simple mould from an offcut of half inch MDF. To drill out for the weight, I'm using a force nib, which at inch and three eighth or 35 mm is slightly smaller than the base of the top. Depth wise, I only need to go down about 3 16th of an inch or 5 mm. Mixing up a small amount of two part wood filler, I can cover the centre hole left by the force nib. And then back on the drill press, I can use a smaller 4 mm or 5 30 second bit to make the holes for two prongs. To use the mould, I need to clamp it to a flat surface. And then I can melt some pewter on a small hot plate. This can be simply poured into the mould and given a few knocks to make sure it fills out the smaller holes. After a few minutes, the pewter's cooled enough to be tapped out of the mould. Then with an awl, I can mark the position of the prongs and drill them out on the press. To prepare for assembly and the glue, I'm scuffing up the plastic with some coarse sandpaper. Then I can find a glue stick in a matching colour and let the gun heat up. With a large dollop of adhesive, I can press the top down and leave it to settle. To seal around the weight, I can run a bead of glue over the gap. Once it's cooled, using a Stanley knife, I can trim off any excess. And then shorten the ends of the prongs. These can then be flattened with a hammer to securely rivet the top and the weight together. To create the holes for the Q-tip to pass through, I'm heating a drill bit of the same diameter. Then I can simply push it into the plastic and make holes on opposite sides. Having removed the cotton buds from the Q-tip, I can use the lighter flame to heat one end until it rolls up to form a small rim. It can then be threaded through the holes in the top and trimmed, leaving enough showing to be rolled up with the flame. For an extra measure, a couple of blobs of glue will help secure it. And then it's time to find some water. Despite making an effort to arrive at the water early, for me, feeder fishing is chiefly about organised laziness. Setting up the rod and reel is all part of that easy ritual. And for bait, I generally stick with pellets, which are normally used in fish farms and require a gentle soaking in some warm, muddy water. To rig the feeder, I can thread it onto the main line, which is eight pound monofilament, and then tie on a small swivel before looping in a four pound hook length, which I've pre-tied to avoid any bankside complications. The hook, a size 16, has a small plastic band on a hair rig, which neatly holds an unsoaked pellet. To load the bottle top, I can fill it with some drained pellets. And then, after compressing it, I can push my hook bait into the top of the pie. A gentle cast, should put the feeder out amongst the fish. And I can lay the rod in the rests, 
and then tighten up the line until the sensitive rod tip bends round. Then once I put my feet up, I can check out the competition or maybe feed the local juvenile delinquents. I find feeder fishing seldom starts with a bang, but the odd knock to the tip sets things off gently with some warning before the proper bites come. Common bream tend to be the mainstay of this type of fishing. But it's not unusual to pull out the odd roach or even a car, and some attention are always welcome. And not forgetting the rud, of course. Thanks for watching. To see more handmade fisherman projects, you can follow the link to my channel or subscribe for future updates. <laughs>